Hiya friends, it's Chloe. I'm feeling a little need for like cuddles, so I have this cool little hoodie. Um, I think it's supposed to be like a jogging shirt or whatever, but it's one of my favorite color blends on it, and I just, yeah, it just felt good in the moment. So if I'm looking weird, need whatever, you can tell me or what, but it feels good right now. <clears throat> I'm doing much better towards the end of the week here. But I have a little bit of trailing uh, dry, I don't know, stuff with my throat. Um, but I shouldn't cough you or, ha you know, be too weird that way. I'm doing a video because it, it's freaking October and it's one of my favorite times of year. And I went to, um, as feeling better, I needed to take care of several errands that had been put off due to illness. And, um... So I also have been, like, when you're sick, you know, you can't go full bore. But I find my oracles and my my coworkers um, nurturing and supportive. And I don't have a lot of close-by friends. Um, I, I've started making some friends with some of the homeschooling moms that I've been hanging around lately. But I haven't been able to make many inroads with the local pagan community Um Mostly just because I haven't been able to go to many events yet. And um, I think I was a bit homesick for a while for my old community back in Utah. But I, in acknowledging that and, and doing some readings for myself, I, I'm making an effort. I'm making it. I got to the last meetup for one of the bigger uh, Facebook groups of local community. And it was kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of having to relearn how to interact with new people. Um, I was so used to my old community and them knowing all my little quirks that it's it's interesting to try to figure out how not to be repeating old history and yet still conveying as a person with um, sensory things. It gets tricky because you don't want to like be listing off all this stuff to people. I can't handle this. Da, 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 da. You just want to kind of go in and be present and experience and then um you know just deal with whatever you have to deal with <clears throat> without acting too odd you know <laughs> it's basically how it is and i'm sorry my like eyes are like kind of bugging with the light right now and <clears throat> that's partially why i'm wearing the hoodie today so um yeah so this is one of those days where i um i'm i'm not 100 but i'm not feeling totally horrible and I'm needing to just kind of push myself to go and be out there and do things. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing with this video. Um, one thing I'm really kind of excited. I've only started to wade through this a little bit, but I do want to give a shout out. Um, this is uh, Bakara Winter. I hope I said your name right. Um, from what I've read somehow so far, she's a young um, sounds like she comes from the East Coast, New York area. She's got colorful language in here that my sons would totally appreciate. Um, they've been flirting a lot with some minor cuss words and crap lately. Um, and I've been trying to teach them about when it's inappropriate to speak in that those tones and when it's, you know, I don't care if they want to use some colorful language some of the time. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, this, I really was taken. I, I, I saw the spine over at Barnes & Noble. Uh, WT, WTF is Tarot, you know. And I like a good F word every once in a while. I don't use it all the time. But I like colorful language. I like how it expresses things. And honestly, I don't mind using some foul language occasionally. But because I want a lot of people to feel comfortable here, I don't use it a lot online. Um, I find, uh, just in the beginning part, I mean, this book is kind of like a beginner's book, uh, from what I can tell. But there's some interesting stuff in here. And I... Uh, uh, if you've watched any of my early videos and whatever, you know that I'm like getting back with Tarot, but I'm reading it very intuitively, more how I read my oracles rather than by the set system of Tarot. Um, it's in there. It's all in my brain. I actually used to teach Tarot classes. Oh, like, oh, it was before I had my boys. I think I taught, I've only taught one 
throughout class since my oldest was born. So it's been 10 years since I was teaching throughout classes. And I always kept it more toward um, a light system based off of uh, the book, A Magical Course in Tarot, um, and tried to lean towards intuitive methods with, like, say, learn your basic numerology, combine that with elemental meanings of the suits, and then develop some basic meanings that you identify with um, when you get certain major arcana cards that just hit to your brain really quick. Otherwise, it's what am I drawn to in the picture? What's happening? What story is coming to my mind when I look at this major or minor arcana card, whatever it is? What part of the picture am I most drawn to look at or pulled to or whatever? And then that would be how I read the story of the and the current of the person I am focusing on for the reading or persons. I mostly do individual readings now, but <clears throat> sometimes I would do group readings and let me tell you that can be quite exciting. So this supposedly young, I think she's like late 20s now from what I get from what she says in here. I haven't read all of it yet, but I am really intrigued. Like just the artwork that's in here and, and how she talks and just things like that. I, I'm really liking this book. I like how it's a bit irreverent. There's a lot of more modern language and slang and cuss words in here and stuff. And if you like something that's, um, I mean, I'm sure this is more geared towards millennials and, and those just getting into Tarot, but I needed something that wasn't going to be like, this means this, you know, I, I wanted something that's like, it does have some of that in here, don't get me wrong, but the way she talks, I feel like I'm talking smack with some of my friends, you know, like, we're getting into a conversation, we're starting to get maybe, uh, you know, if not goofy, but a little irreverent, and like, just hashing it out, and I kind of miss that, because in my old community, I had a, uh, I was helping run the um, divination and intuitive arts and practices gathering and we would all just come and bring whatever our newest decks or our favorite decks and share it with each other and if you didn't have a deck or a tool maybe you were trying to learn to open up your intuitive senses your clairs or whatever and you wanted to um the people who came to the group were willing to have you try out your skills and maybe give some ideas for practices or tips to open oneself up in safe ways or create you know balancing and clearing uh, practices for yourself, things like that. We, we covered a lot of ground and it was a lot of fun. So when I saw this book, something about it like made me not feel homesick, but, but like make me feel comfortable. And I really loved, at least so far, her first bit here. I would definitely check this out. Even if you're um, like a really um, uh, experienced tarot reader, I just think this is such a cool voice in our tarot community and and I'm very happy you have found this book. Again, I'm still reading through it. Yes, there's meanings. Um but uh, then she has like an antidote like like what she was doing or something that she was going through. And then beside and then in a reading it talks about, you know, the cards. So she does that for the major arcana. Uh, plus I really like the artwork that they're showing in the book. I don't know if this is a real deck. I haven't gotten that far into it, but I just I don't know. I, I was just feeling really charged when I saw this book. Uh, it was a big debate in my head between this and this uh, animal magic book from Pagan Portals that I saw. But um, I went with this just because I felt like I would probably want to come back. And I, sometimes when I read books on Kindle or Kobo or whatever, the pictures and the setup of the book doesn't come through as well as having a handbook itself. And again, I really like the art. It's like very simple, black and white, but there's so much character in here, folks. And the and the design itself on the cover just really grabbed me. I'm not one for the elemental symbols anymore. Um, and, you know, I've said again and again, I'm Triple Realms girl, but I, I was reading another book that I have that I really, really love. Um, again, it has a little bit of craft practice in here um and it should it, it is what it is the lady uh, is a specific tradition in wicca um i can't remember off the top of my head which one but let me see alexandrian wicca she's from the united kingdom this is emily carding the lady who did that shot by a she tarot whatever it's a fairy tarot of sorts they kind of have almost like they're fairy but they look a little bit like 
an alien touch to them. And I have the deck somewhere I was looking for. I'm like, dude, where is my she side for real? I don't know. So anyways, um, I was going through this, and uh, it mentioned in here uh, my favorite symbol is the Triscout as per, hold on one moment, my tattoo, which I've adapted. It's not a proper Triscout. It's a little bit adapted on the spirals. And the shape, if I do it right, uh, it's hard to do that when I'm facing the camera, but depending on how I position my wrist, it has more humanistic body shape in it. For me, it's a triple realms um, religious symbol I can use, and I don't have to wear jewelry and that kind of stuff because sometimes I can't handle jewelry on my body due to sensory issues. So I adapt, and the tattoo is perfect for that. I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to handle a tattoo. <sighs> okay, so <clears throat> there's some really awesome stuff in this book if you haven't read it read it yet. Um, it It's basically, <laughs> if you haven't read this book, fairy craft it's really good at there's like so many interviews exercises building up of a spiritual practice based off of a and i guess uh wicca craft um i am not a wicca but and that's why i'm not using everything in here but there's a lot of really good information in here and one of them was about the triscale which is my favorite symbol this talk about the pentagram and a bunch of other symbols this is part of uh, cha the chapter one on knowledge, um, and we got some really a good picture of it, uh, as well as the septagram, the pentacle, others, and the glyph, the great glyph of the she that she uses on the back of her tarot deck. And again, I was gonna have it outside, I could show you, but uh, I still don't know where all my crap is, or sorry, my stuff, my tools, my coworkers, blah blah. blah. So, um. Yeah, so it talks about the Triskel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained. I haven't taken my focusing supplement today. Um, but I wanted to read it because it really had a cool little description in here towards the middle paragraph about the Triskel. There it is. Okay. So it talks about how the number three has a lot of different meanings and great significance within Celtic spirituality um and fairy lore in general and they talk about um the morgan hecate the fates and how there's like triple goddesses or or um archetype things and then they talk about the triple crossroads um uh how it can represent the paths leading to hell heaven and elfland and then there's the traditional three wish wishes and fairy tales in three guesses to a riddle and, and then the three colors, uh, red, black, white. And then this is the one that got me. Um, in the three realms, land, sea, and sky, and even the elements, earth, air, water, with fire being the divine spark that dwells within. And that even fits in the Triscal uh, shape and meaning. So I usually try to shy away from the element system. But when, they, when the way she worded it made me go, oh, okay, I, I think... That lends very well to my land, sea, and sky. That lends very well to how I kind of think of the Celtic realms and the element. To me, the true element or being that is one that we share life with is fire. Because if there, it's varying levels of temperature and vibration and movement, which is represented very well by fire or what I like to think of is lightning, electricity, that kind of stuff. And because it is literally... A physical thing we experience, but it is also a spiritual current or energy or however you want to think of it. And the one thing that I always remember is fire does not have a home of its own. It dwells within the three realms, within the physical planes of reality and the spiritual planes as well. It transcends and moves through all those things, like how we think of the tree and how it represent, is a representation of the three realms and the different levels of being. And so many other things. The Tree of Life and stuff like that works really well for that too. <clears throat> so, long story short, something about the symbolism and her her kind of East Coast New Yorker vibe speak of her young generation and age um, really, really speaks to me. I love it. I am kind of an irreverent person myself. I try to be pretty clean most of the time. Most people are shocked when I cuss. Um, 
because I don't do it all the time. I don't feel the need. But lately, I've been having to make like peace with that aspect of sorry language and vocabulary because my boys are at that age where you know pushing the boundaries on what they can say and can't say, and they're avid gamers and YouTube watchers, and so yeah, they hear a lot of language that I'm not exactly happy about. Only because when you're that young, you don't have really good control, especially with, like, I have ADD. I'm very sure that my youngest has ADD. And my oldest, he he's a bit controlling. He has a bit of a boxing style of some anxiety. So, saying all that, I try to just give them good guidelines. Um, with the impulse control that comes with ADD, my youngest has some problems with knowing when to talk certain ways, when it's okay and when it's not okay. But he hears all kinds of language all the time. Even within the homeschooling community, we, we get, have very strict Christian type people around us to very loose, kind of casual, you know, whatever language type people around us. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. I have, I'm, man, this is horrible. So, you know, I'm going to cut off there because I'm just going off and I'm already at 16 minutes. And I don't want to make this too long. Uh, please like or dislike. Let me know if you like this kind of video. If not, I will. I just want to get a little tune in. I try to look kind of clean cut when I do these things, but I'm starting to get a little bored with that. And I'm a quirky kind of out there person. And if you can handle that, then I'm just going to let you have it. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. And, of course... Feel free to share any quirkiness, uh, family, uh, if you love the Triscoll too, if you have found this book already and you've read more of it than I have so far, what do you think? I, I think she's rather fun to read. Yeah, and, and I love this, like, no-nonsense approach to the ancient art of tarot reading, young blood, old magic. Like, I like that, that kind of atmosphere of her book. I like, it's very clean cut it's a new kind of way to approach it and um, I like her irreverent way she talks or maybe it's just east coast I don't know there's something about it that was like you know it's not like I'm gonna copy or anything but I'm not uh I don't know but there's been a lot going on <laughs> okay enough bye-bye like dislike let me know okay bye-bye